Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, so I, as you guys know, I absolutely love Samurai. It's my favorite book in the Valiant series. And with its release coming up soon, I wanted to give you guys some special extra behind the scenes content. And I'm gonna go all out with Samurai doing whatever I can, um, as much as I can. Um, and give you guys as much content as you can to kind of build up the hype and get you guys pumped as pumped for Samurai as I am So one of those things is for Samurai It actually has a map just like Hunter, but with Hunter I was new to the program that I was using I didn't really know what I was doing and so with Samurai I know more about the program I have a screen recording software now and I'm just really getting advanced and it's super exciting so I decided to do a video of me making the map of Samurai and I wanted to show you guys this program and literally walk you guys through the process so we're gonna do a time lapse with a voiceover of me telling you guys like what decisions I made and why um, and I've got some cool music so I really hope you guys enjoy this and a little bit of a breakdown of the world of Samurai and I hope that you enjoy this video as much as I'm having fun doing it um, the quality of the videos if I do some of my reactions while I'm doing it is going to be from my screen recording software so when it shows my face the quality goes a little bit down um, but I hope that's not going to be a problem just in case something major happens and you guys it's going to be funny for whatever reaction that might be that might be a thing too so I hope you enjoy this video so I use this program called incarnate and it's really cheap it's like 20 bucks for a year and um it's like the best program um, and they've been like um, I've had it for a while I've used it for a lot of my maps so you guys get a behind-the-scenes look at some of my maps so this is um, Zagora this is from Hunter obviously this is not the final version this was the first version this was the second version um, and then of course I added text over it so that the places would be named um, this is Takim this is a world from my book Remnant which is in the Valiant series this is Kazin um, it's from um, Enslaved which is another book in the Valiant series. And this is Nalasia. This is fine, like one of the random worlds is not actually in the Valiant series. Not sure what this is. Yeah, I'm not sure what that map is or this one really. So um, some of these are kind of random. So creating a new map. Yeah. When I first got on this program, when I used it to make the map for Hunter, it was like, um, like different, like it was older, but they've had it, they've updated it since. So I'm still trying to like get used to this. So, um, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I think I need the brush tool. This is basically kind of new. I thought I knew what I was doing, but I really don't. Um, so basically, how do you do this? Paint your land and ocean. How do I do this? Uh-huh, I figured it out guys, it's the background button. Duh! So this is probably going to mostly be time-lapsed, but I think this is a good color. Um, so on these kind of maps you can decide if you want to make it more realistic where you have grass and hills and you show the lakes and stuff or whether you want it more of a map style where it's like just a generic map color um, and so for this map I think it's more of like a technical military map not really geographical so it doesn't show the trees it doesn't show the forest it doesn't show anything this is like a military map so it's got where the cities are located the clans the borders and where the forts are located and stuff like that so if i decide to make a detailed map of the main clans within the book um which is the sakamoto clan um i because that's where most of the battles take place um i will go ahead and do that myself um So basically what I'm doing is I'm adding the ocean, so this would give me my the shape of the main continent here. So I'm going to try to copy it as best as I can. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, 
Um, and this is also just like a snippet of the main part of the world. Like, I don't think this is the only continent this world has, but I haven't really expanded past the main portion of the clans. Um, and like I said, mostly I was in, oops. Oh no, I gotta start coloring all over again. This is a disaster. See if I can't do the clan divisions. So. Right, so this is the main clan divisions. So I'm gonna put text on here, which was is this is a new feature. They didn't have this. That's why I had to actually add the text from for Zagora in a different program. And of course, my main clan, Sakamoto. Yes, I had to look how to spell it. I just wanted to make sure. These are Japanese, um, these are actually real Japanese clan names from the 1800s, so I wanted to make sure I spelled them right. It's really hard to remember some of these. I didn't want to make them up because I wanted it to really reflect Japan, so that's why I used real clan names. These are the bad guys, the Iwashita clan. They are the main villain throughout the whole thing. The Yamada also play a big role in the war. The Osaki play a big role in the war. The other ones don't really... The Nishimura play a small role in the war, so they don't really... Um, let me... So I think this is what I want to use for this. Um, simply because this is just supposed to show the clan divisions and where they're located. I think I'm going to do kind of a zoom in part to focus on this area, which is where the war takes place. Um, I think that's the important part. So I think this is where I need my focus to be. So this is kind of going to be the focus of the forts where they're located, the battlegrounds. Um, Okay, so basically the first thing that I did in this particular map, because it was zoomed in, is trying to figure out a texture. And I had to narrow down my choices um, and try to decide what color I wanted the land to be. So I tested out a bunch of different ones, as you can see, um, to try to figure out which ones would be the best. And um, a lot of times my mind can change when I'm designing maps, so I started going with this tan kind of color and everything. Um, so a lot of it is just kind of like playing around to see how this program works and what I want to do with it. So there's a lot of me kind of going back and forth. Um, so I started with the land and then basically changed to the ocean and I draw the ocean, the water, to get the shape of the mainland. So a lot of it is looking at my map and looking at the color looking at the shape of it and I was having difficulty getting the shape of it so I wasn't sure where to start off with so you can see that I'm starting and stopping several different ways and several different versions of it so at first I was just like okay let me try the corners and then um, you know try to incorporate it from there So then after that is getting the geography together. So playing around with mountains and you know different things that you can place as terrain. Um, so I use the path tool to kind of outline where the border is for me. Um, and then just trying to figure out where the mountains are. Um, I turn them sideways because technically from this direction they'd be coming that way. So I don't know, it kind of looks weird right now, but depending on if it, comes together in the final one we'll see what the final look is um, so it can look a little weird at first but um, trying to get all the the border and things and a lot of these stickers are brand new like in the old program I'd used before they did not have near this amount of stickers and stuff to use on it so a lot of it was just kind of 
um, new for me to figure out, okay, what stickers do exist? What can I use? And figuring out what I want to use it at, what I want to use it at. So they're making the river that goes through the land using the path tool and everything. Um, as you can see, the mountains here are separated. That pass in the middle is actually a major battle in the middle of the book called the Chaton Pass. You'll see me name it later. Um, so when I was creating the mountains, I knew that I had to separate them and leave a, a huge, basically, valley in the middle of this mountain range that separates their land from another one. And of course, in the middle of that mountain range is a river um, as well. So in the Chaton Pass, there are several different forts um, that exist that a series of battles take place in the Chaton Pass. Um, so that's basically that. And, you know, um, they actually added um, Eastern stickers. Again, the last time I had that, they didn't have themed stickers or anything. So that was all new to me. And um, I, you know, picked out different stickers for different locations and places, specifically the main palace and the main city um, in the Sakamoto clan, which is where um, Megami reigns as empress and where a lot of major scenes take place, obviously. Um, so after that, I picked out a fort sticker that I really liked and just started placing them randomly across the map um, based on my map. Not really randomly, but on my hand-drawn map, I have them placed in a certain way. Um, in the book there, I'm not going to talk about spoilers obviously but there is a specific um, reason why the forts have to be laid out a certain way uh, because of the way that I wrote the plot line so um, that's kind of what I was what I'm doing um, later in trying to figure all this out you know where the forts go strategically what makes sense with the clan also what happens with the storyline um, and the plot line and stuff like that I also um, those are the forts that exist inside the Chaton Pass as I said that's a major plot in the middle of the book um, probably a majority of the fight scenes take place there um, because they're trying to take over this pass to hold the pass from the bad guys and vice versa and so they fight um, in several forts that way Way. Um, so I was also trying new stickers again they had so many different stickers and everything I was trying different things I wanted to fill in the mountains and make them look really good um, but in the book they're not just mountains they're kind of more like hills and highlands as well um, so that's why I added in the hill stickers as well and kind of blended and mixed the two together to make the Chaton Pass because that's kind of what it was um, in the book and how it's described so my goal was to try to use the stickers to make it as close as possible um so then i went with um those are the borders to the sakamoto clan so i wanted to include the names of the clans that are bordering them from the big map that we just saw um so as you can see the sakamoto clan this is the sakamoto clan um above them is the nita clan and below them is the iwashita clan the bad guys so that's why there's a, a lot of forts along the bottom border with the iwashita as the war escalates those are the forts where all the where a lot of the fight scenes take place and then of course the Chaton Pass into the Osaki clan um, again that's a huge plot in the book um, again because they're trying there's you know stuff going on with the Osaki clan um, that's Tajoshi that's a town where one siege takes place that's the Sakamoto capital that's the town and then of course there's the palace as well above it in blue um, I loved the eastern stickers that they added here um, because they didn't have that before and before the program was very limited so it was really exciting to get to use Eastern style um, you know stickers because obviously the book is based on Japan so going back to Ch Chijoshi I can't pronounce it very well but um, that's one of the cities that another big fight scene takes place in with the main characters um, and then the city that I'm working on above there is a port town um, actually right now off the top of my head I don't remember the name of it I think it's called Tanazaki and it is a port town so that's why I decided to use some of the boat stickers and stuff because it, a lot of things get imported there um, another important fight scene and plot in the book takes place takes place in Tanazaki simply because it is a um, a port town as you can see there I named the Chaton Pass but anyways the Tanazaki um, it's important because that's they're trying to claim the resources in the port and the the accessibility of it to getting resources and supplies into the Sakamoto clan so with that cut off basically they wouldn't have any supplies and if you're trying to attack the clan that's gonna be one of your major hits is the port town so after that it was about um, adding in different cities and towns and villages um, throughout the um, 
the map and figuring out where I want the different villages and different cities to be placed and stuff like that. Um, and forts, um, because the Sakamoto clan have a lot of forts. A lot of the clans here actually basically have mixtures of forts and clans and everything. So I kind of just had to fill in the details. And a lot of it was me thinking strategically in the sense that, um, you know, again, how the plot line goes, where the bad guys are headed, where the good guys are headed, um, and that sort of thing. So it's a major major um you know plot to the book in terms of where the attacks take place that's kind of a plot in and of itself on top of the actual book plot and everything so and then you have to think of the realism of okay the, where are the forts being placed and um you know because a lot of forts would be put over water and half near water that way you could get resources you know food water that sort of thing that has to be easily accessible so filling in the rivers and everything of course they would have to be attached to lakes or the ocean of course and you know making sure that all makes sense um you know realistically speaking as i'm making this map so it's a lot of decisions to make and a lot of realism and a lot of figuring things out which when i'm hand drawing it it's all you know fine and dandy and a lot of hand drawn stuff just kind of focuses on the basics and on the the strategic point of the fight scenes and the plot line but in basic when you're going from a paper drawn hand drawn map to a program like this you really have to make sure that it um you know, you have to make sure that it makes sense, realistically speaking. So that's what I tried to do. So this is the final product of both the Sakamoto clan kind of zoomed in map and the final product of the overall clan map that shows the different clan locations. Hope you enjoy them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope that you had a lot of fun with that. I know I did. It's been a blast. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video and share it if you're interested. And if you have anybody that are interested in like map making programs and if you want to make it yourself, I use the program called Incarnate and it's like 20 bucks for a year. I mean, it's massively cheap um, and it's really, it's a really good program. So I encourage you guys to get it if you have your own maps for your fantasy worlds. Share this with any of your artist friends or your people who, who are interested in like time lapsing artistry type videos or if you're curious about how a world um is supposed to be laid out and how to make the map for it how do you make these decisions and stuff so yeah just share this around with your friends be sure to subscribe for more writing and reading videos and stuff like that so thank you guys and i hope you enjoyed